Right. So from what I gather is basically it's hard to have a technical definition for intelligence in, in even in the modern day scenarios. But if itself the first idea of intelligence is something that we are still struggling to define with, how does the idea of sentient or is it just basically hype from the news media articles trying to no, make I mean, a point? I think philosophers, I mean, we look, I mean, AI is just a new kid on the block to some extent, or it's just a sort of uh, like a potentially legitimate child of huge number of old disciplines on the block. And, you know, ever since we, I mean, there were sentient beings, the human sentient humans, they started wondering about things like, what does it mean to be conscious? What does it mean to be intelligent, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Again, it's hard to pinpoint and define uh, in a black and white uh, binary way, categorical terms, what these things are. But we do know that they are not one and the same, for example. So sentience is essentially being aware and having an inner understanding, you know, having inner dialogue with yourself, for example, or knowing what your goals are and knowing that you are trying to do these things to reach those goals. Um, that is different from intelligence, which is just getting there. You know, they're not one and the mm-hmm. same. They tend to be correlated uh, uh, very much. So, for example, um, animals are sentient. They, you know, your dog is sentient. You know, your dog is not as intelligent as you, but it's way more sentient than uh, Lambda or any other, you know, newfangled AI programs that we're talking about. You know, it's very much aware of its uh, world. I mean, you may not necessarily know what its inner thoughts might be, but certainly it is aware of what the world around it is. It has an understanding of its own goals, you know. um, But one of the strange things is that, I think you all know Noah Harari in Sapiens points this out, that there's been a great decoupling um, once AI started, which is up until like AI time, um, when computers started showing um, intelligence, Intelligence and consciousness came as a package. So your dog has certain amount of intelligence, certain amount of consciousness. Your uh, you know, uh, dolphin has certain amount of intelligence, certain amount of consciousness. You have certain amount of intelligence, certain amount of consciousness. I mean, obviously, there are scales, but they all came as a package. There never was a thing where it's just this is a pure intelligent thing, this is a pure sentient thing, you know, especially intelligence. Um, the great decoupling really is that we have now machines which are quite intelligent, but we have no clue whether or not, they they don't have to be sentient. And we certainly don't have any clue whether they are sentient, okay? And I don't think we are anywhere near sentient machines, but the bigger point is looking sentient to other humans is quite different from being sentient. In fact, I think in philosophers have questioned defining consciousness and everybody agrees we are conscious but they can't give a certificate that the other person is conscious i know i have internal thoughts i know i have an internal monologue you may well be acting like you have one i have no idea whether you actually have the same sort of consciousness that i experience you know because these are subjective experiences and so to some extent we, I mean, the whole theory of mind essentially says that we have evolved to anthropomorphize everything. We basically assume that the other person has the same inner life, other entity has the same inner life as I do. It works quite mostly okay with humans, um, but we do this for non-humans too. I mean, I mean, there is a great psychology experiment where basically we even kids, even as kids, we will see like triangles going around squares. And we start saying, oh, the triangle is chasing the square and the square is sad that it got caught. This is complete nonsense, but that's basically what we do. We we look at the world in our, you know, from our own subjective experiences. We think we share, the rest of the world shares it. And so it's not at all surprising that we will consider you know, a computer program to be sentient. You know, my joke has been in 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 in, in the uh, AI courses is that 
a thermos flask can be considered sentient. You know, you pour, you know, cold coffee in it, it keeps it cold. If you pour hot coffee in it, it keeps it hot. How does it know? It must be aware of the stuff that's being poured into it. So again, th there is this aspect of simple, crisp definitions are hard, first of all. And secondly, the fact that we will consider things to be sentient, we will consider things to be human-like is something that's in our genes. You know, that's basically, that's how we evolved. And, you know, and I think we... We see human farms everywhere. You know, the in in US, you burn a toast. Suddenly, people start seeing Mother Mary in the <laughs> farm of the thing. And in India, every possible stone I would see, people will say, "Can't you not see the Lord Venkateshwara's, uh, you know, uh, markings on it?" So we just essentially into this sort of anthropomorphization. And so, the fact that we consider that people think many things are sentient um, is not surprising. I think it's a lot more worrisome from AI perspective, not arguing about whether or not things are sentient, but to realize that even if we give a certificate saying LLM is not sentient, it doesn't stop tons and tons of people from thinking it is sentient because they can't tell the difference between talking to a human versus talking to uh, this program, at least in certain narrow context. And, uh, and at that point, you can get into trouble. I mean, you obviously, I think most of us are aware of the original ELISA program that the in history's first chat, chatbot um, that Zoe Weizenbaum wrote, and it was like a dumb program. And it was essentially doing pattern matching and was playing a Rogerian psycho, psychoanalyst. And yet, you know, he found that his secretary was essentially pouring her heart out to this program and at some point of time told Joe, don't be in the room, I'm talking to this program. So basically they wanted to have a secret dialogue of this program. And even mm -hmm. now people have actually found, for example, that in, in, um, in, in, in like um, army, in military, when, you know, soldiers have post-traumatic stress disorder, et cetera, um, and they they have found cases where they are more willing to be more forthcoming if they think they are thinking to some sort of a computer which sounds sentient than to an actual human. Because we also sort of kind of know that it sounds sentient, but we know it's not fully really the human. And we know that humans can judge us, whereas programs may not judge us. And, and so... Yeah. This whole thing becomes a, a strange issue of how we deal with what we consider our sentient entities. And you know, AI people have to deal with this impact of the programs as they become increasingly more human-like, even if they don't have the same band, you know, brand of consciousness, the same brand of intelligence, they are human-like. So, if it quacks like a duck and looks like a duck, how long can you argue that it's not a duck? There would be enough people who think it's a duck. And that part is a more pressing issue than laughing at people saying, oh, you're stupid for thinking that this program is in shape. Yeah. Right.